Hi, my name is David Pino, and this is Pino's Pages. Now, Pino's Pages will be a video series, either weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, in which I examine books of which I check out from the library. Now, the library I use is the Robbie Waters Greenhaven Pocket Library, located here, you guessed it, Greenhaven Pocket, and it is part of the Sacramento Library System. Please support our local libraries. Um, they are a fundamental and critical resource for any democracy um, or so-called democracy. So this week I will be examining this book, Reconstruction, America's Unfinished Revolution, 1863 to 1877 by the historian God, G-A-U-W-D uh, or U-D, Eric Foner. Eric Foner is one of the greatest historians that I have gotten to read from. He examines the era of um, Reconstruction, um, but also looks at Abraham Lincoln, wrote a very fascinating biography and how he came to be an anti-slavery president, uh, looks at slavery, um, and then, of course, uh, parts of other uh areas of the world too but this is this really like from 1863 to 1877 that's like his area of speciality um, another historian who's really good at this era is James McPherson the author of the critically acclaimed uh, historic uh, Civil War book um, Battle Cry for Freedom which is the most comprehensive text about the Civil War ever written and uh, it won a Pulitzer in I believe 87 or 89 and this was released in 1988, by the way. So that was a really, really, like, from that time period, like, that was some of the best uh, historical work really ever done on this period, on uh, this uh, era in American politics, or American history, rather. So <clears throat> what is Reconstruction? Um, Eric Foner presents it and starts it off at 1863 for a reason. Most historians put it at 1865, which is actually technically true. It, it did start in 1865 after the uh, Civil War when uh, the Confederacy surrendered. Um, but he starts it at 1863 because he places it at um, a very particular moment, that the seeds of Reconstruction happened as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed slaves, or which was in order to... Uh, abolish slavery within the Confederate territories, though not the border states, um, which ultimately didn't free a single slave, but what it did was it shifted the war goal focus onto ending slavery, which originally the war was not supposed to do that. Lincoln really just, you know, uh, went to war um, as a result of the Fort Sumter attack, but more so the goal was just to preserve the Union. He said he if he could, you know, preserve the union without freeing a single slave, he would have done it anyway. Um, but if he had to, you know, preserve the union by freeing slaves, he would have done it too. He was just a pragmatist in that regard. And moreover, he also wasn't, while he wasn't, you know, a slavery supporter by any means, he also wasn't really uh, supportive of black people at that time. Uh, he wanted to ship us off to, you know, uh, Liberia or other African uh, nations uh, or areas and um, that because he didn't believe that we could actually be productive citizens and, you know, had this whole racial inferiority thing. And eventually his goal, his viewpoints changed, which Eric Foner details in another book of his, um, which was released in 2011. But this particular era of Reconstruction is, this or this particular uh, era, yeah, is important because it helped lay down the foundations for what American politics would be for the next 150 years. The same way that World War II impacted global politics, Reconstruction impacted American politics. And, you know, to make this somewhat, I'm, I'm going to be a little brief. I don't want to go off too much because there's so much in this text. It would really take like hours to really go into, you know, and explore, but I don't have hours and that would not really work well for this format. It would also kill all my data, too. But, um, however, the most important points that the book raises is the creation of a um, new class structure, the uh, ascendancy of the northern industrialists, because they made a lot of money as a result of the war, and um, they 
you know, that's effectively why the Republicans became the party of the rich was because they, you know, all the people who had invested within the war, you know, all the cannons and all the railway tracks and, you know, the guns and all these, you know, war profiteers basically got rich as a result of, you know, the bloodiest war America had ever fought, you know, up until hundred, nearly a hundred years later. So then, of course, they, you know, extended their influence upon the uh, Republican Party. Foner details this. Also, the rise and the backlash. Okay, so there was also the newly created um, project of emancipation, which then got the worst backlash of all time in the form of white supremacy. So black people were gaining freedom and, you know, we were, um, you know, we had started, we had been given the right to vote as a result of the 15th Amendment. We were given the right to have all, you know, to not be discriminated against by the 14th Amendment, and then, of course, the 13th Amendment formally abolished slavery altogether, which, by the way, yesterday was the 151st anniversary of the passage of the 13th Amendment. However, with the exception, of course, those who are in prison, which is a conversation for another time. However, what Eric Foner details within this book, and it is very important, is the fact that the um, rise, the backlash against, you know, black freedom is essentially why Reconstruction is called, or why he calls it, America's Unfinished Revolution. The fact that black people were denied, um, you know, their rights actually set the stage for where our community is right now. And it definitely did so for the next hundred years, because you had, one, the rise of a terrorist organization known as the Ku Klux Klan. Um, You had the... um, Also, the White League and uh, the Red Shirts, other paramilitary organizations that were dedicated to uh, destroying black uh, people and preventing our freedom. You had the rise of the the new Southern Democrat parties in addition to a new planter class, which was not the same as the old planter class. Um, And, of course, um, it, it just, you know, they stifled everything we did. You know, these they they did their best to make sure that we couldn't vote, and um, you know through poll taxes, through the grandfather clause, um, where they did our best to lock us up and force us into slavery by another name, twofold in the sense of sharecropping, and then of course peonage, you know, uh, prison labor, and so and then of course there were all these sundown laws. There was laws to prevent us from owning guns. There was laws to just prevent us from being full citizens. And that set this that set the tables, you know. I mean that that was that was the foundation for why black people just could not get it done. Now, what Eric Foner does here within Reconstruction is it shows that okay, it started off as an emancipatory project and it didn't fail because of its own internal flaws. It didn't fail because, as the Dunning School, uh, historiographical school, said, was the result of, you know, oh, the North was just uh, aggressive, the carpetbaggers were taking advantage of people, and black people weren't ready for freedom. No, that wasn't the case. The reason why it was the case was because it was destroyed by a white supremacist backlash that kept us basically as second-class citizens for the next hundred years or so, and it's unfortunate um, that more people don't know about this and that more people haven't evaluated it. And when I say, <clears throat> excuse me, when I say more people, I don't mean like scholars, even though there's plenty of scholars who don't know about this. I'm talking just like the general public, um, pu- you know, consciousness, collective, you know, imagination aren't necessarily aware of why Reconstruction, uh, of its importance and why it actually failed. So, I encourage y'all to check out this book um, and um, also check out anything from C. Van Woodward. Uh, he had The Origins of the New South. He um, And then, of course, there was also W.E.B. Du Bois's book, Black Reconstruction, released in 1935, which actually was the uh, spiritual uh, godfather or forefather of this book. So... Which he, um, which Eric Foner later shows credit to, you know, gives shout out to. Like, this is like the remix, the continuation, the even more historical, um, way more comprehensive. Um, yeah, but again, check out both books. But this definitely, I think, is 
somewhat superior to that in just ba on the basis of historical scholarship alone. Um, if I have any final thoughts, I would like to say it would just be to continue to support your local libraries, continue to um, study this particular era um, of American history, 1863 to 1877, um, only because it really does tell you all you need to know about the rise of modern white supremacism, uh, the rise of, you know, why the South is the way that it is, um, and how the ghost of the Confederacy still haunts us to this day. And part of the reason is because we didn't exercise it properly. Like, once the government lost interest within Reconstruction, that was it. And more people need to be aware of this. So, I, I've been David Pino, and... I hope to see you all next week. Take care.